110. Not as high as a pure porcelain cam, um, at, but it's not as pure, so you'll often see stoneware um, with grit in it, sand or grog, um, and it'll usually not be a white color, and that is from iron oxide. Um, whether it's added there on purpose or not, if you had stoneware that you dug out of the ground, it's probably not going to be white. It's going to be to contain some amount of iron. Uh, porcelain is a, uh, a primary source clay. It's it's generally pure um, ball clay, I think. It, it has a, a really high melting point, so you can fire it to a really high temperature. Um, there's no grit. There's no larger particles, it's all small particles, and that changes the way that it acts. Um, the larger particles help to provide structure in your throwing. If you think about like trying to build a wall um, out of stones and mortar, uh, porcelain is just all mortar with no stone, whereas stoneware has bigger pieces and smaller pieces, particle size-wise, and that kind of help each other um, stack nicely. So why would anybody use porcelain? The smoothness of the body is really, really nice. You can get super clean, gorgeous results uh, with this smooth surface. Um, some porcelains, <clears throat> if they are thrown thin enough, or if they're fired when the, the walls are thin enough, they'll become translucent which is incredible and just crazy gorgeous. Hey, 9.5. A six month gift subscription from Miro B. Oh, that was incredibly generous. And 9.5. Um, so one of the things that I'd like to do one of these days is to get the porcelain super thin, just eggshell thin and fire it so that it's translucent. I would, I would dearly love to do that, but it's not happening on a big piece like this. <coughs> okay, so we're at the height that we want. The, the wall thickness, I think, is pretty even top to bottom, which is important for getting, um, getting the piece to feel well balanced. The general um, propensity is for the clay to be really thick down here around the base and to thin out as it gets gets higher up here. It's just easier to pull the, the clay thin up here. There's nothing sitting on top of the clay up here. Um, whereas all the weight of the rest of this is applying pressure down here. And with a soft clay with very little structure like porcelain, often a taller piece as I sit here and talk, will uh, flow <laughs> down into the base. I have a support activity feed at the top of my chat. I don't know what that means, but... Is that new? I like it. If I swung by earlier, I think you were at a, a BRB screen, but I was just enjoying all your all your little clips. It's funny how a good BRB screen like that, it feels like we're hanging out even though we're not. You know, I still got to be a part of your life. Ferocious Roast, if it's something you're interested in, you have access to it, I say give it a try, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I am, will always be a big advocate for um, like a community college ceramics program, because um, usually tuition is really, uh, really affordable 
and the supplies and uh, knowledge that you'll have access to as a student taking like a, a quarter long class is just hugely beneficial. I know a lot of people who just want to give it a try, like sign up for a, a weekend class or a four hour class or something like that. Um, which sounds like fun. Um, but obviously there's, there's a depth of, of knowledge and um, technique that there's no way you can even begin to to scratch the surface of in a uh, one night class. All right, where are we going with this? Just a simple, clean profile. Hey, Belinda. I saw you streaming uh, watercolor earlier. Like at a time when I was awake, even. Hi, it's nice to see you. Can you see how much it's shrunk, like, in the, the five minutes that we've been sitting here talking about it? I feel like down here is now really thick again. Mo mosaic. That sounds fun. It's basically the same. It feels like this area right down here is just an inch thick. This doesn't need any more thinning out. This is as thin as it needs to be up here. My goal is for when somebody picks the piece up, for it to be feel surprisingly light. And when there's a an imbalance when you pick it up and most of the weight is down here, it feels heavy even if it's not actually that heavy. Hey Trig, how you feeling? Nice to see you. <laughs> this is the first time you've seen me working with porcelain. Am I liking it? It is uh, a struggle. The entire process is a struggle. It's either like too soft to get it to do what I think it should be doing or so hard that I can't even center it. Um, yeah, big struggle. Big struggle the whole time. And I'm having, it, having to put a lot of effort into accepting the struggle. Which at one point I was really good at. It was like the main feature of my stream. It's just like, okay, this is going to suck, but I'm going to keep going. But then at some point, I kind of figured out how to throw. <clears throat> Do I smack around the porcelain before I throw? Yeah. I mean, I, I wedged it prior, and then generally with larger pieces of clay like this uh, there was there was a good deal of smacking just to get it centered as a preliminary effort I'll either master it or I'll switch back to, to stoneware soon. I 
action to be doing this pull. I, I can feel that it's not the correct action. Thixotropic, that is uh, where you put energy into it to put it into suspension, isn't that correct? Yeah, this is, this is Reclaim that I'm working with right now. I think I learned about that um, when mixing glazes. I was told you're supposed to just mix it for several minutes straight, as long as you can afford to, to mix it. And that energy that you put into it um, helps to keep things in suspension well after. <clears throat> It's just getting worse. <laughs> this pot is not not moving toward whatever ideal vision I have in my head for it. It's just just slowly slumping toward. Uh, Yeah, I haven't been using very much water. 60 hours this week and you have two days off. Nice, enjoy it. All right, check it out. Well, I know I went too deep at the base, so I didn't have enough clay to make a foot. Well, look how thick it ended up down here. This is the thickness that I wanted, but I don't think this is strong enough for the rest of it, but like, how many times did I go down and grab this clay and pull it up, and I still ended up with it like an inch thick? And that's been my experience with every every big piece that I try to throw with porcelain. So uh, I end up with just really fat bottom bases, and I don't know how to address that. I get to throw the pieces. I, I chuck them over at the, the plaster bat. Yeah, it may be a, a technique thing. It may be that <clears throat> I need to blowtorch it. And that it's just never going to be able to support itself. When it 
it's moist enough that it's easy to center, wedge and center. It needs to be a little stiffer, but it doesn't get stiffer as you throw it because you're adding water to it. Maybe I'll do what that, that one artist I read about does. Put some paper in there and light it on fire. Overhead heater blower thing. Yeah, I saw, I think it was a YouTube video of a guy who uses a scissor arm and a, a crank timer, a scissor arm like, like what this is on, and puts his heat gun on it and just leaves it over his pot it in there and he'll crank it and turn it on for an hour and just like go and have tea <laughs> and then come back and uh, and then blow out his pot he was making like these really um, really rounded exaggerated uh, pots that you just can't do um, with soft clay Is it quick? Find the tab with the slapping. All right, another big throw attempt here. And let's just get out of my head the, the very idea that I'm going to make something for firing. This is not going to turn into something that goes into the kiln. This is an experiment. This is a lesson. Enjoy your chill time, Trig. You voted thimbles. Here.
You don't have to move as much clay to get it centered if you put it into a, a donut shape. <clears throat> Instead of having to move the entire mass of clay, you now only handle a, a small arc of it. Oh, God. Theoretically. Beatty, thank you for the, the sub. Bill, you want me to skip this? I can skip it. So much appreciated. Those bubbles were for you. And that subscription pushed us into uh, an eminence event, and we distributed another ember stone out to Deep Sea Leviathan, who I think has four now. So they're well on their way to getting to redeem for their. Uh, custom piece. I believe they want a, um, a frog pot yarn bowl. So I think that's going to end up being six ember stones. They are making good progress. If you're wondering how to get ember stones for yourself, because you'd like a piece of pottery sponsored by the community, made by me, here for you, uh, it starts with praise. Praise stones. Belinda, thank you very much. incredibly generous. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. That put us at, what, 78% to our next uh, eminence event. Let's see. What do we have here?
I appreciate that. Now, my goal is to get to give pottery to people who might not otherwise uh, be able to buy handmade work. And to share it with people who spend their time with me here. It makes me happy. So I currently have a have the bot doing math and splitting the uh, the net income from bits and subs and uh, tips in a 80-20 split between uh, paying for pottery shipping and stuff and into my pocket. So 20% of it goes into an account that I uh, I just keep for myself and 80% of it I spend on uh, pottery costs and shipping costs and <clears throat> getting ready to send out work to people who get those ember stones. Did we get... The button's not working. But basically, to get ember stones, here, use the praise stones. Here's an explanation. Gaia Green coming in. Welcome, Raiders. Hi, everybody. <laughs> that is a stinking cute emote. I like it. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. You found my pottery stream. It's nice to have you here. Split the lark. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the pride. Welcome in. Yeah, if you're brand new here, you've never seen me doing this before, I stream pottery three nights a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Hi, Gaia. How are you doing? How was the stream? Tell me about it. And thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Pride. Bring on toast. Spaghetti Rose. Thank you for the follow. It's welcome. You come in on a night when I am working with porcelain, which I don't find easy to do. It's a struggle. <clears throat> it is a humbling experience, <clears throat> uh, which is hard to do live in front of people watching. <laughs> Doing a little painting, nice. What kind of painting? What kind of paint? What's your subject matter? What do you like to do? I want to know more. Stream watercolor. That's uh, ages ago. A little faster. A little more speed here, please. It's a lot of clay. Pets. My very first actual watercolor attempt was um, painting dogs with 
not a lot of success. It takes practice. You can't just jump in and be good at painting dogs. Lubricate. Miss Amy March. I agree. I, I was, before I started doing pottery, I thought that the idea of streaming pottery would be really interesting uh, and pleasing to watch. <clears throat> Watercolor is timeless. I think that the, the gestural nature of watercolor is always going to be beautiful. I do have a quiet wheel. Um, I actually got this wheel specifically uh, as a consideration for the stream because I speak softly while I'm streaming. And that Brent that I had, or I still have it, but it's not in here. Brent is a noisy, noisy boy. This Shimko is quiet. still some clay to move here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do a quick hydrate. It is the whisper. VL. friends. If you have any questions about what's going on here, uh, let me know. I'm thrilled to chat. Um, and if you'd like to participate in our uh, reward system, if you wanted to, for example, help uh, Gaia get a piece of pottery from me, uh, you could use our praise stone system. Here's an explanation for you here. And basically, all you have to do, step one is gonna be exclamation point roar to get yourself some praise stones. Praise stones are energy, basically, that you can send to other people. That energy accumulates, and when somebody uh, quivers at the top, uh, will receive ember stones, which can be exchanged for real pottery. The community pays for the, uh, the materials and for the, the shipping, and it means that I get to send out my work to people who uh, might not otherwise be able to buy handmade pottery. It, I love being able to share with people, so get in on it. So grab, grab your price stones with command roar and then use praise and target somebody and it sends points to them um, and then as we hit uh, goals basically funding goals based on uh, subs and bits and uh, tips uh, as we hit those goals I, I disperse ember stones which can be exchanged for for different levels of pottery 
So like if you just wanted a small cup, it's, it's two ember stones. It's quick and easy to get, relatively speaking. And if you wanted, for example, a, uh, a yarn bowl that looked like a frog, that's, uh, that's more, you know, a, a tea set is gonna be a bunch, like eight or nine or something. Yeah, and since there are a bunch of you here, you're gonna be getting bonus prey stones as well. A yarn bowl that looks like a frog. I haven't actually made one yet, but if you go to my Instagram, you can see one of my uh, frog bowls. And then it's just a matter of making a way for the yarn to get out. Ooh, more textile people. We've got lots of textile people who hang out here. Yeah, I like making yarn bowls. My wife is an avid knitter, and every time I do a firing, she comes out and surveys the, the results, and will often take a bowl, just claim it. This is mine. And then, uh, of course, it's just gonna hold yarn balls. And she winds her own balls and uh, pulls from the center so she doesn't really care about the, the little swirly. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't updated my Instagram in a while. I had to uninstall it from my phone. Just like, because it was poisoning my mind. Just stealing my hours away. <clears throat> So I haven't thought about it or posted posted any updates, <clears throat> but my work is substantially better now than than what is on there. I probably should do a little photo shoot update. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so what's our goal here? There's still so much clay to move down here in like the bottom third. Huge amount of clay. Should I try to move that? Or should I plan to trim it off uh, after it's drier? And what shape do I want for this? What am I trying to accomplish here? For the moment, I'm going to remove the moisture from the bottom of this pot. You just let that puddle sit in there, it seeps into the clay, and then you end up with goopy walls. <laughs> You'd wait, but it's my cylinder, yeah. If I had a blowtorch, that's what I'd be doing right now, it's just giving it a blast. Blowtorch fun, yeah. Um, set it up. Do a little shopping. Yeah, I've got a spot for a propane tank right down there. Oh, I want a big one. I want one of the ones that you like use to kill weeds, you know? seeing a YouTube video of a guy who regularly makes big pots and he had a candle off to one side. I was like, I don't understand the candle. I don't know what that's for. I guess I haven't been doing pottery for very long. It became evident about halfway through the, through the throw. And the clay was just too soft to continue. If you got your prey stones, 
Don't forget to use them. They don't do you any good just sitting in your pocket. You then use them by uh, using praise uh, and then at somebody. And then you'll infuse them with the energy of the stone. Hey, Jalopy Jones, Fleet Admiral, it's nice to see you. So right now I'm using a stainless steel rib. It's serving a couple purposes. One, it's scraping the, the soggy outer layer of clay off so that the, the water in that sogginess doesn't penetrate into the rest of the, the wall. Two, it's helping to compress and align the clay particles. And that compression and alignment helps to make the clay stronger and will make it more resilient to the things that need to happen to it uh, upcoming steps. And it's helping me to shape. <clears throat> and um, yeah you could acquire points and if you're curious to see where you are on that points list you can just use the command points it's kind of fun when you're brand new to, to check your points and see like I'm in 20,000th place right now <laughs> I'm never gonna get there but then a couple people hit you with praise stones and you're like oh now I'm in the top top 100 it goes quick yeah see guy is uh, at 149th place that's not bad that's a quick jump up additionally if you happen to have more than one uh, prey stone in your collection in your stash you can use command stash to see it um, you can praise at someone and then put a number uh, to indicate how many stones you want to use. Because I had people like sitting around with hundreds of them in their pocket and I didn't want them to have to, to do it one at a time, so I made a, a function for that as well. Yeah, so Soul Monkey Research has 40. You could drop all 40 of those on somebody at one time if you wanted or distribute it however you like. I try not to, try not to influence how people use them. What are glittering nuggets? Glittering nuggets are used for our um, collectible cosmetics. So you can buy uh, collectibles that have effects. Uh, one of them that I'm planning is to, uh, once you get it, once you spend the, the glittering nuggets to buy your mark, um, 
you permanently have the ability to trigger the bubble machine once per stream for free. I haven't built it yet, but that's one of the one example of uh, what I'd like to have happen. But it'd be terribly difficult to be able to pray multiple random people at some point. Uh, not only does that sound difficult, but it um, I want the praise to be deliberate. I've purposefully chosen to not have the praise go out to random viewers. Uh, I want you to, to engage other people and to have it be a deliberate act of giving and generosity. And I know it can be difficult to like put yourself out there and and show that kind of connection to somebody else like there's that there's uh, rejection sensitivity and worry that somebody's gonna like take it the wrong way and feel weird <coughs> Belinda thank you very much sorry it's loud is it too loud Bubbles, so many bubbles. All right, so let me just very quickly, let me adjust that audio and make you not look at my shorts. Yeah, and I understand that. Hopefully using the at will help that with that. Okay, very quickly. Um, events. Oh, geez. No, it's going to be action group. Overlay. Um, sub alert. Why is that disabled? that that's about at the same level as my voice Well, thank you for letting me know. That's uh, the the audio thing. So I don't know why that was suddenly out of balance so badly, uh, but I, I need to know that kind of thing. Ginger Wild, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the Pride. <clears throat> yeah, how fun to have have you guys get to see. All the different cool things I have going on. Um, the uh, that stack of gift subs that we just got sent us over the edge for another um, eminence event. So earlier we had Deep Sea Leviathan receive another Ember Stone, which accumulating those once again 
is how you get the free pottery. <clears throat> and Kay Quimmy, who won the monthly giveaway of two Ember Stones, uh, just got chosen for most eminent, so they received three this this week, which is pretty cool. I'm excited for them. So another thing I'd like to point out about this system is um, it's not like a raffle where if somebody else is selected, you lose. You don't lose any of your currency, you don't lose any of your points or your standing. The person who wins gets their points reset and whoever was number two goes up to the number one spot and it's, it's, uh, it's progressive. So you don't, uh, even if you don't, you, you can't be here like every stream, like some of the people who are, who are winning and have won five or six times, um, even if you can't be here with that kind of consistency, you can still participate and you can still eventually come out on top. And that's, that's exciting for me too. Should I hit this with a heat gun? I think I'm going to switch microphones because these mics are too close to this whole thing. So I'm going to turn on a microphone across the room. I'm going to not talk for a little bit and I'm going to hit this with a heat gun. just going to sit here for a little while. Great A concept. Bell would like me to, uh, that sounds terrible. I don't think the didgeridoo mic is going to pick up the, uh, I'm going to try it. It was, a, it was a good idea and I like it. And it's kind of funny. So let's just go for it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> sound check because I haven't I haven't done it yet I haven't done a sound check in a while on the didgeridoo levels Amanda hoopla thank you for the follow welcome to the pride sound how's the balance how's the how's that audio you're right it could be a little louder
<laughs> that was uh, complicated. <laughs> How to put the heat gun away without starting a fire. That would be great. Whew. Yeah, time for some water, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, the lips are the main reason why I usually do the didgeridoo at the end of the stream, if I do it at all these days. <clears throat> the good news is you didn't hear the heat gun. That was uh, a primary goal. <clears throat> Bubbles got in my water cup. How do I know? Oof. All right, so it looks like our my CO two reading is not showing, but we are we are high right now. What got me into didgeridoo? Um, it was a weird like confluence of um, media exposure where I like I saw somebody doing it on a YouTube video, and then I saw somebody else doing it like busking on a street, and then I heard it in a movie, and I'm like okay. I think I want to try that. It was just like all in all back to back kind of in the same week. Real quick here. Um, <clears throat> there's something wrong with my, my CO2 readout. I'm going to see if I can fix it. Weird. All right, well that's that's a new thing. So the fact that it's broken doesn't worry me too much. I'll figure it out. Uh, weird that it just broke like that just now. Uh, um, refresh cache of current page. It might be that that thing's not on online anymore and that would totally break it. Yeah, it looks like it lost Wi-Fi connection, so that'll do it. Anyway, back to the pottery. Yeah, it's, I've just been having problems with um, reliable connectivity of the, the air monitor. I thought I solved it because I discovered my router was... Um, automatically switching devices between the the 2 and the 5 gigahertz bandwidths and that device is only is not compatible with the 5 Turn that off, the auto switching. And I had pretty good consistent results. I don't usually do this, what I'm doing right now with the roller. I think I tried it once before and rescued a difficult piece. Brie on toast. I uh, hope to see you again soon. I'll be back again tomorrow. I stream. Uh, three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So I'll be around. I have been...
talking about switching my time slot, at least for the summer. Because I come out here into the studio uh, right when <clears throat> it starts getting hot in this room, this room specifically. And the air conditioner is too loud to run while I'm streaming, so I, I cool the room down as much as I can the hour before the stream, and then I just let it cruise on that. And actually, air temp in here, it's 77. That's, that's doable. You, you hate using your blow dryer when you're working on projects because it's hot in there or because it doesn't sound good? Because if it doesn't sound good, I have a solution, actually, to help with the, the hair dryer sound. It involves a didgeridoo. <laughs> What shape do I want this to have? That's the next question. But let's just take a moment before I proceed and possibly uh, ruin this. Like, what a nice cylinder this ended up being. <laughs> I'm thinking of just cleaning it up and having it be just a, a slightly tapered cylinder like this, maybe widen out the base just a little bit and then taper it up, kind of a, a seed shape. some good progress there. That felt good. A little sticky. I'm just, I don't want to use a ton of water. I just spent all that time drying it out. But I also don't want to pull it off center. Because the clay is sticky. <clears throat> and it is sticky. Kind of like that compound curve. <clears throat> More plastic. Plastic is the word. Spaghetti rose. Thanks for hanging out. It's been a pleasure. Have a good night. Hope to see you again soon. Tater pies. The seven months. Thank you very much. Thank you for the bubbles. 
Ooh, that um, that notification is loud. Why did all my audio get crazy weird? Would you always add textures to a piece while the clay or porcelain is wet? Are there times when you would prefer to add more dry, for it to be more dry before adding a texture? Um, a lot of the texturing that I do is just a natural, um, natural part of the throwing. I generally don't go back and do a lot of texturing um, as like a surface treatment. Um, and that's just kind of the way that I work and the way that I like to express uh, myself and my my clay is <laughs> star thank you thank you very much um, I don't do a lot of surface treatment after the throw um, but there are differences in the way that the the texture will look if you do it when it's wet it will look like you moved the clay when it was wet you'll have um, a little bit of muddiness there will be a soft flow to it whereas if you wait until the clay is a little harder you can do cool things like you can cut uh, really cleanly and then break the clay <clears throat> and it makes a really distinct uh, texture where the clay breaks and rips rather than uh, just gets smeared which is all that's possible when the clay is wet um, if you want to do any kind of detail um, as far as texture goes, you want to wait for this to be leather hard. Why didn't the, the sub notification go off? Why is the sub alert disabled? Weird. I just re-enabled that. Something's turning it off, I think. But with this porcelain, I like to showcase how smooth the clay is. Um, so a lot of the times I'll go back and remove textures on purpose. And with this piece, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of a, a dual texture piece. So I'll have one section that's really smooth and one section with the throwing lines. Yeah, I'm going to try to preserve this, have kind of a, a convex up here and then a really subtle concave up here that kind of mirror each other for balance. very rockabilly. Is it the haircut? Or the, the overalls with the undershirt? <laughs> the combo.
gonna be a big vase. that rib that I was using, I got to do plates, but this seemed like a good application. It's not a big curve there. And hopefully, as I make these fairly subtle changes, you can see like how big of an impact just a, a small shift in the profile can make on the overall language of the piece. Just a little bit of cracking at the base and the interior. I think that I can compress it. <clears throat> picked up a wobble and I found 
go weird. Weird interior wobble. I think this piece is done for now. And I went longer tonight than I had expected to. For those who are not up to date with my like personal stuff. I got COVID. I'm, last time I tested, I think two days ago, I was still positive, but I am recovered mostly, but my energy level is just devastated. Uh, I still have kind of a cough. I sleep a lot. Um, and um, I find myself like short of breath and like feeling like I did hard exercise on simple stuff like emptying the dishwasher. So I'm in the recovery process. The, the stream can be strenuous at times, but tonight went really well. I have to say having fun people hanging out and engaged and new people coming in on raids and the new follows and all the subs and all that that's that's all gratifying and motivational stuff as well so thank you all for making it feel good to be here <clears throat> So that wobble that it picked up is not that big of an issue because this is going to come off the wheel. It's going to get turned over, uh, and I'm going to trim the bottom flat relative to the lip anyway. So. Plus, as I like to point out, it stops wobbling when it's not spinning. So, no big deal. A wet cough for a week afterward and a dry cough for almost three weeks. Uh, my wife is in the the wet cough phase or the dry cough phase right now and I've got the wet cough going on. So I'll keep that timeline in mind as I progress forward. But like today, last night I slept for nine hours, which is a good good amount of sleep, like nighttime regular diurnal human kind of sleep. And then I accidentally took a two-hour nap, again, <laughs> for several, for like the the tenth day in a row or something. I've fallen asleep in the middle of the day for a substantial amount of time, and then again, right before the stream, I fell asleep on the sofa. I'm just like, I'm wiped. And then there's part of me that's like, I'm just being a lazy piece of garbage. <laughs> uh, you know, like. I know I'm sick, and I know that what I'm experiencing is, is part of it. <laughs> yeah. It's actually been nice in this part of the state up here. It's, uh, I've been really grateful to have reasonable weather in July, like where it's only in the 90s outside. <laughs> Yeah, I expect it to get awful. It, it routinely gets awful. <laughs> yeah, COVID is no joke. It's like my daughter, my five-year-old daughter got it, and it was just like a two-day thing, and she's fine. 
completely bounced back. My wife got it, and she could barely distinguish it from her regular allergies, seasonal allergies. And then I got it, and I was on my ass for five days straight, just like fever and uh, body aches, just terrible. <laughs> just lying there having a little pity party, like I can see why this kills old people. Like <laughs> it was, it was unpleasant. benefit of being the last one to get it in the household is I don't have to like worry about getting my family sick and they get to like help me <laughs> get better so I've got I've got good support I keep I continue to be reminded like you're supposed to be resting it's okay that you're taking naps like I, I need to hear that on a regular basis <laughs> you don't have to feel bad it's it's hard because like I am a, a lazy, uh, just <laughs> messy kind of lax person in general. They can bring me fa. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but now I'm actually sick. Like I have I have drive. I'm motivated to to do more and to uh, like contribute better to the household and uh, be a really active part in, in helping us to live better, more productive lives. But, but now I'm sick. <laughs> I'm hoping next week I'll be, I'll be all bounced back. We'll see. You get pneumonia a lot. I think I remember that about you, that you've you've had it a bunch of times since I've known you. Yeah, that's that's rough. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> but not 2020. Yeah, we've We've known each other now for like two or three years, right? Four, four years? Three or four years, yeah. <laughs> so you've gotten pneumonia a bunch of times <laughs> since then. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'll be back again tomorrow. 7 p.m. Pacific time. It's possible that next week I'm going to start at a different time. I'm thinking about starting at 2 o'clock and going until six, five, 2 to 5. And that's going to coincide with better with when it's cool in this room. <coughs> and when my daughter starts going to kindergarten, it'll be uh, that time will be when I'm back from picking her up. So she'll be in here with me three times a week doing her thing over at the hand building station and helping co-host the stream, which I'm looking forward to. I think that'll be fun. Um, and, uh, and then I'll have evenings free to cook dinner and help with the family and, uh, get stuff done. Just be more present right now. I'm spending nine, nine prime time hours a week away from my family to do this cause I enjoy it. But, uh, that time is important. So, uh, hopefully I'll be able to reshuffle. It's possible that moving to that time will make it possible for more people to be able to hang out because I know that right now it's late for a lot of people. It's past bedtime. Chloe. Jameson, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Pride. We'll be back again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Pacific time. I'll keep you all apprised of the schedule going forward. Um, in the Discord. So if you're not in the Discord and you'd like to uh, be a more involved part of this community, that's where we hang out. Consider yourself invited. <coughs> it's a it's a community of very kind people. So uh, swing on by. I have a Twitter. If you're on the Twitter um, because you like being miserable, I guess um, I I have 
I post there uh, about my schedule stuff and the stream stuff. Um, I'm not funny or uh, <laughs> like I don't. I'm not trying to get go viral. Rosnar, hey, nice to see you. Thank you very much. I am pleased with how it ended up coming out. We made some adjustments to my uh, centering and throwing for porcelain, and I used the blowtorch, so it helped a lot. Um, what other buttons was I going to push? I was thinking of, I was going to push this button. We'll try that button. Yeah. All right. And wise, it was nice to meet you. Hope to see you again soon. I'm going to try to find somebody to raid. If you would like a glittering nugget and you're still around, using the command goodnight will get you one of those glittering nugs. You can get two per stream, one by being here at the very start, like as we go online, um, or as the, the starting up screen ends, and one by being here at the end of the night and using that goodnight command. And it looks like it's working. And we're working on the, the marks marketplace for you to be able to exchange those but just accumulate just be accumulating them the marks marketplace for you to be able to exchange those but accumulate just be accumulating them I'm feeling like get those nugs out Those here. glittering nugs. Alright, we're going over to Freakmeister1, who paints animals, paints pets mostly. Right. We're going over to Freakmeister1, who paints animals, paints pets mostly. I enjoy that stream, so. Say hi. Doing a cat. I enjoy that stream. Oh, he's in a different space. The whole thing looks different. Down under. What do you think that means? Who knows? Let's go find out. Here we go. Jumping. Oh goodness. Welcome back, Rhino. How was your stream? Thank you. Oh man, I was so locked in on this painting just now. Welcome everybody. I'm trying to paint a cat at the moment. And my screen looks a little bit different. I'm in a Different location currently. Is it bad gamer or just deep gamer? Hi, thank you for the follow. I don't know why it's not working. I'll know. Wait, I do know why. It's because I don't have any of my commands down here. Bad gamer got it right the first time. First time I got it right the first try. Blue Star, thank you. You're in a different space. Yes. Thank you, Daphne. Appreciate it. Right now, there's a whole bunch of sculpting. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Said it wrong the whole time. I'm surprised I was able to get it right. Holy moly. Me, of all people. Everyone says VD usually. Yeah, my this is not my typical studio. This is somebody else's studio that I have moved all my stuff into for the time being. I will be in Australia for a couple months. So I brought all of my paints and stuff with me so I could work on things here. It's a bit of an adjustment. But I'm getting there. So, my overlay 
eyes and such are going to look a little different while I try to adapt. I don't know your usual environment. It is different. Mm-hmm. I got a wall of paintings behind me usually. That I've done. I don't have my dog wall. That's okay though. Just a little bit of a learning curve with the use case. Lighting, especially. Wow, very important. That was one thing I didn't anticipate being as different, like camera settings and everything. Oh, okay, Allah, well, thank you. I said hello as well. I have to like log in and then set up the stream deck and then set up my easel and like move the watercolor stuff out of the way get my palette ready this palette ready got to move the keyboard I got to change that in the back I got to get move the ring light I got to adjust the window when before I would just open up OBS and take the 20 seconds to make sure the camera was adjusted properly and then hit go live. So it's a little bit different. There's just a lot more to try to remember to try to build a routine on. My paint water is going to be in a different spot. My keyboard is in a, you know. So. Things just kind of get moved around. I keep looking over there for my paint water. Turbo and Tiger. Turbo. Hi, everybody. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get pictures. I might not be able to get pictures today. I was trying to get pictures of Jacqueline's paintings because I have a fancy camera that I got specifically kind of for uh, coming to Australia. So for like prints, I was taking pictures of her painting so we could have like really high quality prints. I was working on those. Oh, I don't know, did I finish any of them? Yeah, I did. Here's one. Yes! Yeah, yeah, funky. Yeah, this way you can see like the gold and the silver a lot easier. What? I gotta agree to my own chat rules? 
Okay. Oh, I forgot. It doesn't even work for me. Hmm. See that person with the pink username? Follow them. I believe you never agreed to them. Mm-hmm. Yes. No.